This is the Andy Social Podcast. My name is Andy. You might know me from a band called Lord. Um, no, that's not the Lord with the E on the end. And it's not the one with the I on the end. Well, of course it's not, because then that would be Lordy, not Lord. Anyway, um, we're also not a Christian heavy metal band. We're just a heavy metal band, just plain old heavy metal. So uh, you can, I don't even know where I'm going with this. I was trying to introduce myself and, and yeah, failed miserably. Moving along, this week's guest I present to you all is Travis New. Now, <laughs> Travis, I've known for quite a few years and is probably one of the most sought after guitar players in the Australian rock and country scenes. Um, he's really, really in demand and has played with amazing players for quite a number of years. And uh, probably most known at the moment for his work with My Sex, um, who are this legendary Australian rock band from the 80s, and Steve Balby of Noiseworks fame fronts them. So he spends a lot of time doing stuff with, uh, with Steve and My Sex, but he's also done a lot of other stuff with many, many other uh, artists. Um, I saw some stuff not too long ago that he did uh, some session uh, touring with, Bonnie M? Is it Bonnie M or is it Boney M? <sighs> so if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you'll know by now that my pronunciation of words and names and places and whatever is not crash hot. So let's just say it's Bonnie M. Um, he's also done a lot of stuff in the country music scene, uh, working with Jasmine Ray and a whole bunch of others. I know nothing about country music, but we speak about this quite a bit. And actually, while it's on my mind, um, we talk about bro country. Now, apparently, that's a genre. It's a subgenre of country, and I would be putting a sample of bro country in the show notes over at andysocial.net. So if you haven't been exposed to this yet, you will be shortly. Well, that's if you go over to andysocial.net and check out the show notes. If you don't, then you'll miss out. Trust me. So we caught up at Coogee Bay, and uh, it was a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, the sun was out, and we slammed a couple of coffees and uh, sat on the steps on Coogee Bay Beach and just uh, shot the ship for about an hour. And it was fantastic. I hadn't seen Travis for, for quite some time, but um, he's been quite busy. And he just literally got back from Europe a couple of days earlier. So you're still uh, battling jet lag and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we talked, we talked about music. We talked about um, all of his teaching. So he's also a guitar teacher or music teacher through JMC Academy in Sydney. So he's pretty much doing what he loves for a living. And balancing all that with a, a newborn baby that's uh, just about to hit one year old. And there's been a lot of uh, adjustments and challenges there. But um, he seems to be doing quite well. And, um, yeah, very jealous of some of the things that he's achieved over the years. So it's really, really cool to to sit down and have a, have a great chat. So enjoy this episode with Travis. Show notes over at andysocial.net. I'll give you some more info at the end of this episode. But please enjoy this chat with Travis. How you doing? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, good. It's not bad for a for a Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning, Coogee Beach. Could you Beach. Could be worse. We've got a we've got a pretty good view here. Ocean rolling in yeah. on a winter's morning. Lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking for like the last hour or so. I know. Probably got nothing else to talk now about I'm like, now. What are, what are we going to talk Do about we have now? To try and replicate this all again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you were sneakily recording before. Oh uh, like, yeah, yeah, a little uh, recorder yeah, yeah. on my sleeve. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's got a little bug asking planted these, somewhere. Asking all these probing questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me about this. Tell me about that. Um, so welcome back to Australia. Thank you, you mate. Got Thank back, you. so you got a bit of jet lag. Yeah, a little bit of jet lag, and uh, first. Um, trip away with our baby with yep. a one-year-old so that was a a new flying experience and a new way to travel and be on holidays with a little guy so well at least um, you got some experience lugging gear around so yep. instead of a guitar and and all of your sort of music gear now you got to <laughs> carry you know it was a porticot and Ugh. stroller and a 10 kilo human little lump of human <laughs> <laughs> a little lump of flesh <laughs> well uh a 12 month delay but congratulations thank you mate so thank obviously you. life changes quite a bit having yep. a having a little human yeah it sure does but you know it's uh it it's inc it is incredible and um there you go yeah i don't know it's uh <laughs> there you go i'm speechless about That's right. it there you go oh uh, well um i don't know whether it'll ever happen to me 
but um, from what I've been told, the reviews of having a kid, it seems to be pretty positive. So yeah. I'm sure it's still early days for you, 12 months yeah, in. Yeah, man, I, you know, I do, like, I love being a dad. It's, it's just great. And, you know, we were talking before about, you know, being a muso and a dad actually yeah. works out pretty well. You know, I get to spend the week, you know, at home with the little guy and spend lots of time with him. And, yeah. um, heaps of fun yeah you know, they're heaps of fun and it's just like never know what they're gonna do and just watching how they learn and you know they're really you know they're really kind of just in the moment kids you know, they're just doing their thing it's crazy it, to there, watch there's no <laughs> yeah there's no hesitation or worrying about whether they're gonna where they're being judged or whatever it's just like nothing i feel this and i'm gonna do this and yeah. that's what it is and, and i'm I'll, trying to walk and i stacked it 30 times but it's okay i'll, I'll just keep get up it. and try again and, just, <laughs> and i'm happy and i'm stoked there's probably a yeah. lesson in that for everybody <laughs> yeah yeah you kind of watch like man i'll be getting pretty frustrated at this point <laughs> <laughs> don't give up yeah. don't give up um are you pretty lucky to be able to have that where you can be at home so often to like most people when they have kids like someone takes uh, leave from work or whatever for a couple of months and then they're yeah. back to the grind and then the kid goes into daycare or whatever and there's just none of that sort of interaction yeah so we you know we're both more you know we don't have either like our parents are mine are four hours away and hers are overseas yeah. so it's uh we don't have that kind of support here but you know so it's great like my job being flexible and you know she took three months off mm. um which was good and then you know we've just been a, we've been lucky we've been able to balance it between us and yep. you know i do my teaching gig like two days a week so now that my wife's gone back full time we you know we have a nanny one day a week that yep. comes over um and then the other six days is it's cool. is us you know yeah. between us so it's, it's great you know he gets both his folks around a lot yeah you know yeah and also a bit of interaction with someone else yeah. and the nanny brings her son around and they hang and that's cool yeah you know, so that's pretty cool yeah too, you know? good for development it's yeah, good. yeah um your teaching stuff are you at jmc i am yeah, yeah. so I'm, i always keep going to say jcm yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. JCM 500. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I'm there two days a week and, pre you know, it's it's awesome in there. It's um, pretty much what I'm doing is uh, I'm in charge of sort of four ensembles a day, yep. sort of running rehearsals and, um, you know, taking the the student bands through their they they kind of get set different genres and tasks for yep. each unit that they do, and kind of help pick tunes and yep. write out a bit of a rough chart and help them learn their parts. Yeah, and, right. Uh, all that sort of stuff, and and just uh, you know, general rehearsal etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, educate them while while they're listening like uh get those good habits happening yeah early. are they predominantly younger people like they're they in are, man. They're, they're mainly um you know young young guys and and girls that have just finished high school yeah okay so they're you know 18 to 25 years old yep um you know and man, they come out and they get to go and hang out and play music that's cool. All day straight away, and it's um, you know, they they get a lot of uh, opportunity there. Like there's recording studios there. Yeah, that they've got full access to. That's cool. Uh, like man, I would have like imagine that. Like when I was eighteen, yeah. I would have loved to have access to a proper working recording yeah. studio. Absolutely. On a you know, every day basically that you know they they can they can be in there doing that and writing and. They're surrounded by musicians. That's and, cool. Um, and, you know, tutors and, and lecturers there that are around to kind of help out. And So what would be the next sort of step for, for those guys after they've sort of finished their time there? Oh, I mean, it's varied, I guess. There's all sorts yeah, of different things. Yeah, sort of, you know, I guess it depends what they want to go and do. A lot of them go off and, and do, um, 
uh, education degrees and yep. become teachers. Some yep. of them, uh, you know, put bands together and yep. write and take that path, the yep. original yep. path. Some of them have dreams of being on reality TV shows oh, yeah. uh, and doing, taking that path. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then others, you know, they they do, you know they put together sort of corporate bands and you know anything that you know yeah. and then engineers yeah song there's songwriters like i guess that's the good thing about like the industry is that there's just so many different facets that you could be yeah. you, you could go down and you don't even have to just pick one you could pick a whole range of them to, yeah 100 yeah. percent. you know and like really the more the more feathers you can kind of have in your hat the easier yeah it is to to make a living out of doing music even Absolutely. if it's not just playing or recording or whatever you can you know if you can go and teach guitar or you can go and play in a variety of styles doing whatever you know just it just uh it opens up more opportunities than if you've got kind of one thing that you do and that's what you do yeah uh you know if you want to just if you want to be doing music as a at, for a living which yep. you know you can do that they're they're exposed to all of those different kind of avenues there so yep. they can get a bit of a taste of all of them and see which ones they're into and what yep. they can run with and absolutely that's cool it's like um i was chatting to uh steve bull of vice house uh -huh. and he's a teacher out at um uh the western sydney tafe out there and they've got a music uh, program that he runs and um, one of the things that we were talking about is how much the stereotypes have changed or are changing so you know even for us when we're growing up and you tell your parents or other adults and you say oh well, I want to I want to play music and they're like that's nice maybe just uh, maybe just have something yeah, and what's your back what's what what what's what else your put, have you got planned yeah that's right back up job make, yeah <laughs> make sure make sure that you're actually uh getting yourself a job and and finishing school and everything like that yeah and then you can do your little hobby on the side you know yeah, it's like oh yeah. okay radio but um but that's changing a lot more now because i think people understand that it's not just about oh i want to be a rock star yeah it's you know there's so many different things that you could earn money in in the industry and it's not just about I mean, playing on stage is great, but there's so many other things that can be done. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, even if, you know, they've, it's, it's also, you know, maybe they, they do the course and don't ever do music as a career. Yeah. But it's something you have, you know, and you can, they, they've studied it and they actually, you know, they get exposed to, you know, man, we've been in there and they, they do a genre, it's kind of starts off, they do some blues and then they do kind of decades from the 60s and oh, they yeah. sort of do, yeah, yeah. do that and you, you know, I go, oh, well, do you really need to do that? Like, and they, they do ask that and then you put on like a Beatles record or yeah. some Stones, like, and you go, oh, so you guys have heard this and they're like, no, no, uh, <laughs> no I haven't. <laughs> and then you go okay this is good yeah. you know so they they get exposed to great records it's that get, have kind of got us to where we are now that's it you know it's getting a bit cultured yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you know and, they, and it kind of it can you know even if all they do when they leave is that they have a better appreciation for music and good music yeah and then right. go out and look for good music and support yeah good absolutely. music yeah you know, and go and see real bands yeah and, and they they have they can you know find, find that you yeah know, absolutely even if that's that's what they get out of it and by the time they leave they kind of go oh, okay well yeah maybe i don't want to do it for a career but I know what I want to do and man I had a good time yeah and yeah I, you know that's cool that could be it, you know and I don't know, well it's it's the glass half full look on it really I mean yeah, yeah. I mean but making the most of the of the opportunity to be exposed to that sort of stuff and as you said like you could go through that whole period of time um, in that environment and never never go back to it again but 
you can sure. still there's a lot of great takeaways that you can have from your time and, and skills as well that you learn no doubt of just working with people like social skills and oh, compromise and absolutely dealing with <laughs> egos and <laughs> yep yeah 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 you, you play in a band right oh yeah yeah <laughs> do you yeah. think um do you think that you you've become a better muso from from teaching others yeah i uh, yeah, I definitely have because you have to, you know, it's when when you have to explain it to somebody else, you really, you really need to pull it apart and break it yeah. down to its um, most simple elements. Mm. And uh, you know, you take for take for granted sometimes, you know, yeah. how far you've actually gotten, yeah. and you know, you just kind of go through the motions, but. You sort of when you actually have to pull it apart man you always find something new <laughs> it's like and i find you know i'm i go there man i learn something yeah. like teaching these guys i actually find i probably learn just as much as they yeah. do like you know i've got to you know write the charts figure the chord out yeah. you know have to maybe try and explain a drum part or notate a drum part yeah, yeah. out and explain what the kick pattern's doing and then <laughs> talk to the bass player about how their part links up with the drummer's part and, and you probably never had to do that before no because no. i'm a guitar player that's so right. i you know i'm more interested in what the hi-hats and the snare drum are doing you know that's, that's right. kind of where as a guitar player you, you're kind of more focused on that part of the kit when you're listening to the other guys in the band and you know, so all all of that stuff, you know, is, it's I've had to, uh, you know, really listen more, you probably, so I can explain it. <laughs> you probably got a bit more respect now for your fellow musicians in your band or the bands that you play with. It's a bit more of an understanding of where they sort of fit into the mix, as, as yeah, opposed to and, you just doing and your man, thing. Just a, and just a deeper understanding about how it all fits together, like more than I've had before and yeah. and that's you know that that's the other thing it's being playing music and being a musician you know you never man you never kind of learn it all and yeah. you never know it all yeah and it's it's awesome it's like you discover this new stuff and even just like I said just a deeper understanding of how working together as a band and how you you know, when you see those bands, we were talking before, you see those bands that that really just lock in yep. and they're like a machine, you know, it's just all for one, one for all. Yep. And, you know, you see that and you and you go, how does that, why is it Why like is that, that working? Why yeah. is that combination of people, yep. why does that work and why is that so cool? Yeah. Uh, they might not individually be the greatest players technically or virtuosic or whatever you, you yeah. want to say but as a unit it's just like it just works blow your mind yeah. and it just works and it's just this thing you know so it's uh and probably a lot of it would be i mean it's not just the tech uh, the technicality of people being able to play their instruments and understanding sort of the theory behind the music it's it's probably also like a mindset thing of just being a bit selfless and and as you as you said before like did you listen to the other people that you're playing with or are you listening to yourself? Yeah. That sort of stuff. Totally. And yeah. it's, um, you can, yeah, just, you, you know, being, being part of like something like that where you, you know, you're not thinking about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, it's a hard thing to do sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and man, it's just like being in that, in that moment with a bunch of guys creating something yeah, yeah. that's you know and you're giving off some kind of energy and it's the exchange with the audience yeah. and all of that stuff you know there's nothing like it is there anyone i mean you play with a shitload of people over the years yeah and yeah. is there anyone in particular that sort of i guess ticks those boxes as far as someone who's just totally aware of of themselves but where they sit in in the mix with other band other band members or other musicians oh, you know that yeah there's been you know i've been really lucky and i've played with 
lots of great musicians and been in some awesome situations where you know everyone's pretty happening and kind of you know you've got each other's back but you know the guy one of the guys that I work with, like he he sings in my sex um, a guy called Steve Balby yep um, you know you know him from his like bass player noise works yep. and he had the electric hippies yep. and all that stuff you know last year we got to do some shows playing his original stuff from his Black Rainbow record and you know he he the way he kind of leads his band you know anything can happen yeah um so you know it's not this like completely lighting cues are going to happen at 30 seconds and you're going to stand there and, we, and you know and we've learnt the record yeah, exactly yeah. how it is and yeah. it's timed and the show's going to be exactly this long that's mm. sort of it's not that you no. know it's uh he put he sort of puts the band together and and trusts that everyone there who is there is going to do their job and has that awareness of what each other are doing and um, and then as the front man and songwriter has the and he you know is a producer so he has this ability to kind of he can see the he's the picture. team captain yeah you know, absolutely so, and anything can happen yeah he he might go well we're gonna we're gonna stretch this oh, this feels great let's keep it going yeah and it goes and and you can you know and you then then it starts to get really exciting you yeah know, it's like well where are we going to go and you there's this hot you know you really got to be listening and really got to be in it and it's it's this heightened kind of i don't know it's a a different sort of it's experience sort of flow state where you just sort of just, yeah. just completely lock in because you can't just you can't just uh check out and just go through the motions no because you'll just nah. you'll be left behind yeah because yeah. it, it could anything could happen anyone could play you don't know what's going to happen so yeah. you really got to be f aware and and listening and and as in the moment as possible yeah the absolutely thing, you know if you're sort of there thinking well i wonder how we're going to get out of this or what's he going <laughs> to do next like you're probably going to trip yourself up but yeah if you can you know if you can kind of just be in it and listen yeah and be a part of it you know it's it, you know it can all really fall apart and be a train wreck but when it does work and it's pretty it's, cool you know it's they're they're some of the just greatest moments i've had on stage playing you know when something happens and you just have it wasn't rehearsed and you you don't know yes it's, it's just just it just, it just and, worked and don't try and replicate it again and it probably just, will never <laughs> happen again the same way you know yeah, and it's just yeah. you know that they're that, on the side of danger so a little bit fun. yeah yeah it's, it. it's exciting and dangerous because it might all fuck up yeah that's at it. any moment <laughs> and that's what makes it i mean we were saying this earlier as well yeah. it's like it's what makes it exciting to go and see someone perform is that you don't know what to expect and you're not going there just to just to hear a carbon copy of the original songs that were recorded however long ago you go in there to see whatever the interpretation of is of it is now and in that moment as you said like you could do two shows in a row consecutive nights and it could be completely different yeah hopefully yeah yeah that's yeah, right yeah. yeah and so it's just you go there with an element of surprise and and just not knowing what what's going to come of it yeah oh, right, that's and awesome. it's exciting you yeah know, you walk into it and you're like man this what's going to happen that's cool it's um you know that's i really i really like that but you know in saying in doing that you need to know the songs really well so <laughs> that's you, right. at you least you've got a, that base you do yeah. have a really kind of deep understanding about what it is yeah. what the song is and even not just technically and harmonically it's like emotionally what the yeah, yeah what you what the song's trying to say and you know that's been a you know a big part of what i do and it is that that understanding of like when you know because i do play a lot of different styles you know yeah. you're in a country band or you know on a pop gig or something yeah. like that and go well what do i need to play like what what's going to serve the song the best yeah that's right you know what what should i play and 
how should I play it? Yeah, yeah. You know, they're the, they're the, you know, they're the kind of things. You that, need that foundation first, and then you can. Yeah, you know, and then you, you that's the style. I go and see guys play, and you know, when they're really in it in that way, and they're playing something that really just supports everyone else, and. Uh, you know, in the moment, and they're just coming at it from that right place. It's that's pretty cool. That man, I love that. You know, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what style of music it is, or you know, yeah, that it's that that's kind of universal to that's me. Right. You know, if I go see a great band, yeah, I don't care what style it is. It's, it's great. It's that's great. It. It's that energy. Yeah. It's the energy thing that you you get from it. Um, you mentioned it before, my sex. How long have you been playing with those guys for? It would, man, been probably five years now. Yeah. Five, yeah, just five, six years. Yeah, okay. Um, it was pretty much, yeah, just after they, just after they started to play shows again. Yeah. Um, yeah, Murray. H- how'd you get that gig? Yeah, Murray, the keyboard player, I met when I was studying music um, up in the northern rivers, like yep. Lismore and Byron Bay area. And uh, he produced a record for an original band um, that I played in up there, and I sort of met him through that, and ended up playing on other records that he pro- was producing for singers and yep. songwriters, and did a lot of that with him over the years. And then, uh, yeah, he sort of contacted me when they were starting to play again and asked if I'd be up for doing it. And, yeah, cool. You know, I was like course mate <laughs> even just to you know i didn't actually know to be honest i only knew a few of the songs yeah really. like i yeah. knew but you don't care and mm. um computer games and blue day and i yeah. think that was about it and and then i got the got the list and i'd, I'd heard people and all of those i'd, I'd heard the songs yeah, before yeah. didn't know they were my sex yeah songs. Well, yeah um so you know it was it's a you know it's been fun man it's just a great kind of catalog of of work and they're a, they're a really cool bunch of guys to yeah. hang out with and you'd definitely be the youngest out of the out yeah, of the lot yeah man I'm <laughs> dropping the uh, average age um, <laughs> down quite a bit they're, they're uh, around my parents age those guys yeah <laughs> and they love it when I say that yeah right <laughs> But you've, I mean, a lot of the stuff you've been doing, you've sort of come in as the young gun for a lot of sort of, because you've done a fair bit of session sort of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, probably with, um, you know, I, when I was up there, I played in a band called Wards Express as well. They're mm. like a blues band. Yep. And, you know, Ross, you know, once yep. again, he's a, yeah. a much older older guy. Yeah. And, you know, in, and in that kind of, I've been really lucky because you wind up in these situations. It's like, man, I can, how, how lucky is this? Like, how much can I learn from this? Absolutely, yeah. Like the, you're surrounded by experience and, um, and in that situation where you're in the band, you know, and, uh, you know, and probably especially when I was playing in that band, he, uh, hey Dave, how you, doing, you know, mate? I was the young trying to be hotshot guitar player and it's like you know hey man maybe you just want to play the song you know <laughs> and then i was like oh okay yeah right yeah. you know so yeah you have those those moments and you know i'm pretty gr- grateful to all of those guys that offered me advice and and helped me along the way you know when i moved to sydney i played with a a girl named danielle blakey and she peter northcote was producing the right. record yeah. and peter actually played acoustic guitar in the band yeah right i played electric guitar so yeah. man you know i've just landed in sydney <laughs> and i'm in this situation with peter yeah. yeah and it was all it was just like i couldn't have asked for a better introduction into the absolutely world of doing what i do down here That's than it. to be playing in a band with him yeah you know, and he was you know super kind and very generous with uh you know advice and and really helped me help me out a lot did you um so when you're sort of living back up towards byron yeah 
did you go up there? Were you there for, just because of family situation? No, or did I you go there intentionally? I moved for? up there to, to go to Southern Cross yep. University. Yep. And, um, just, and there's a guitar player up there that named Jim Kelly, yep. uh, who I went up there to study with, you know, yep. and uh, yeah, that's why I was up that's there. That's cool. Yeah. Because I think a lot of, um, a lot of people traditionally when they're getting into music, they'll just find same age, like-minded people, and they'll just try and slap something together and learn as they go. Yeah. And you're all sort of learning at the same rate on the same level. But I guess for you, I mean, you've leveraged off people that have been around for a a period of time yeah and some longer than others and you've been able to get so much out of these people yeah so you've done i think you've done so much more than probably the average person yeah and i you know and i grew i i grew up listening to old music yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know like man i love all the rock from the 70s you know yeah. that's yeah you know that's just, that my dad used to play that and that was the stuff that made me want to play guitar like that and he would have you know old blues records and and like uh like santana records like the uh, the, the yeah yeah santana band yeah, cool. records and zeppelin and nice uh you know that that stuff and Cla clapton like yep. all of, all of those sort of sort of guys were why i wanted to play guitar you know and yeah that's cool. I so I, that just out of taste alone is why you yeah, gravitated. I, yeah, I think so. You know, and then more more recently, you know, it's kind of flipped around, and I've been in playing with guys that have been on those reality shows, and <laughs> you know, the pop gigs. You know, yeah. that are what's that like? like? What's that like doing those things? Because it'd be, yeah. I always get the the feeling that it's everything has to be so tight, slick, and also. Not, um, yeah, it's lack of a the, better word, a bit fabricated. Like it's it, it, it's kind of it's the opposite of the Steve Balby yeah, gig because yeah. yeah they what they want is you know and then you know once again I you know I get there and I go well it's not about me <laughs> and and what can I do to make to support this artist yeah. and be and do the best job I yeah, can you yeah. know not really my bag yeah maybe you yeah. know some yeah. some of it's like not my preferred style of music mm. to play but it's like what do you do you know you hear you're in the situation man i'm really lucky that i get to play music for a living so yeah. how can i contribute yeah. the best way possible Absolutely. to it and you know and it is what and what it comes down to it's sort of the opposite of that really spontaneous in the moment thing and it, and it is it comes back to being the technician yeah, yeah. and and replicating the part if there is a, even is a guitar part on the yeah. record sometimes there's not which is fun because then i go well if i played on what the can record, i add to it what would i have played and yeah. what can i add to add to this to you know that i think would help the song and be the right part and generally you'll wind up not playing a whole lot mm. but it, and you you operate as more of like a rhythm yep. section sort of yep. almost percussive funky sort of yep. guitar style in in those situations but they're very different to what i kind of came up playing which was yep. like blues and classic rock and yeah Stuff that's um, probably traditionally a bit more loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and, and yeah, less, you know, and and, and really open, you know, yeah, with, where right. these, and even, you know, some of the country bands I play in, it, it's, you know, it's showtime, that yeah, stuff. Right. It's, uh, you know, you walk on and the, and the set is, you know, they know exactly what's going to happen and what they want and that's great it, yeah, yeah. It, it's entertainment yeah that's you know? right and it's not better or worse than just different. the other thing it's it's very different yeah um <laughs> but it re it actually requires a different skill set absolutely in a way and, and uh, in a way like a really really disciplined approach to doing it because you you do have to play those parts that's yeah. what they want to hear yeah and uh and you know they they have those those records and the you know that they make in Nashville with those producers, yep. man. Those guys, that's 
that's their thing and they, they make hit records and they carefully think about what the guitar parts are doing and when you play what and everything's there for a reason it's all it's all there you know and um i think he at least here in australia you know we don't have that many cities so you're not mm. really playing consistently all you're you know. not playing the same thing for yeah. a whole year so yeah. it's okay you know yeah. maybe if it was you were doing the the same show for yeah. two years it might be a different yeah yeah a different story and uh i imagine it would get a little you know it's like you kind of just start to go through the paces a little bit absolutely but you know for for the runs that i've done here it's been you know it's been fun doing that stuff you know make you a better player no doubt yeah you know it's the it is it's the discipline and you know and even to the point where you've got to like the right have the right sound you know it might not be a guitar tone that i instinctively kind of go for yeah. but it's something that needs to be there for the song like the song requires that yeah thing so you know you have to search for that and go All right well how do i make that sound what is that mm you know is it a pedal is it how you come at the instrument is it yeah what is it you know so you kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit <laughs> with those sort of things as well because you know it's it's about the discipline and the re replication of the part that's on the record yeah that's the priority for their show that's yeah. their that's what the priority yeah. is and and the fans of that music that's what they that's what they come to see they don't really care about if we're gonna do a bit of improv yeah, or do a bit of you know there's going to be extended guitar so they've probably if you know if there was extended guitar solos they'd probably leave yeah maybe you know that's not really <laughs> what they're there for they're there i want the to, chorus they're there, they're there to hear the songs <laughs> yeah that's you it know? that's it so yeah when i when i'm in those those worlds man it's just it's just all about the song and do you feel the pressure from it i i i do yeah, yeah. Though, it's, i that, that's more stressful to me yeah. than not knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. Knowing what's going to happen is yeah, because <laughs> it's like because I know exactly what I have to play. It's like it's if you fuck it up, there's no there's it's, no room it's for no, error. It's like well, you didn't play it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember years ago. I don't know if it was a if it was truth behind it, but I think it was like Prince's backing band or whatever. The whole band was told or something like that. If whenever they m made a mistake, they were ducted pay. Yeah, and I, I th I've heard this with a few big artists. I got some seagulls yeah. cutting sick in the background over there. Yeah, uh, um, yeah so I don't know if, if, if there's truth with all of these bigger performers, but no doubt the pressure to ensure that they're replicating stuff and playing to that standard would be just immense. Be crazy the amount of pressure that you'd have, especially playing those massive shows, those arenas and everything as well. Yeah, and it, you know, like um, even to the point of the set running on time oh yeah you know yeah. for those big arenas that you know there's curfews and if the show runs over time and y you know you can you, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars in what in minutes fees, yeah you know, in minutes of running over time yeah. you've got yeah. like staff that run these staff that are like working at these venues and you know potentially like if it's an outdoor show like a sound yeah issue with residents yeah, and yeah. you know all of this kind of stuff you know so it's um it's yeah. it you know it, there's all of this stuff you don't you know yeah you know, when you're learning to play guitar and <laughs> you don't you know, think about this stuff like, yeah man, I, I never thought about that <laughs> you know I, just, I was just like man i love the sound of that i want to do that i want to make that sound you know that's <laughs> that's kind of what it is and then you you get in these situations and it's like you know yeah, yeah. never did i think that that would be something that i'd be on stage considering uh <laughs> who's the just on that note who's probably the most what's the best way of wording this without making that person sound bad but who's who's been the most demanding that you've worked with as far as and not in a bad way but just someone whose standards are so high but also from a from the point of view of replicating and ensuring that ensuring that sound is exactly what they're after oh man um or you could just 
say who's been the most difficult to work with. You think you go down the <laughs> negative negative path. I was just trying to be diplomatic and and courteous. Fit. <laughs> it depends on whether you want to shit on yeah, anyone. Yeah, it's <laughs> the you know the uh, uh, the one that you know that re- was the steepest learning curve for me. Yeah. That and was was when I started working uh, with Jasmine Ray. Yep. She's a country artist. Um, when I got that gig, I'd never played a country gig before, yeah. ever. Yeah. Didn't really listen to country music. Like, I kind of knew some Keith Urban stuff. Yeah. That was about mm. it. Mm. Um, you know, so that... And, you know, and I'd never been in that world. So I kind of, I was like, right, well, I've got to... I need to figure this out, you know, and and I kind of went in there and, you know, did my rock thing and they're yeah. like, yeah, mm. it's not really it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more, you know, you, it's got to be, you know, I need, I, you know, and it, it didn't, and it didn't work, you yeah. know, and I, and I knew that. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't necessarily get said to me by anyone. Yeah. It, it was just, I could, I kind of knew, I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. I need to... Yeah. I need to go back and have a listen to this thing and do a bit of do a bit of homework um, and you know and with with her gig you know it wasn't long after that that we were playing in arenas like yeah, wow. opening for guys like Brooks and Dunn and Alan Jackson and Joe Nichols like guys that are big yeah, big yeah. country stars in America um, you know so it was you know, was thrown. I was completely in thrown the into the deep yeah. end, and was in these situations yeah. going right. You know, and everything needed to be the co- slick. The country scene for me, because I know nothing about it, but it just seems to be like this secret society. It's almost like the Freemasons or something like that, where <laughs> they've just they've just created their own. That it's an it's it's, it's, it's almost like a separate industry. It's it not is. even the music yeah, yeah. industry. It's just the country and western industry, and it's yeah. massive. And it, it, I think people forget. Or don't realise just how big it is. Yeah, it it is really big, and you know, coming into it from an outsider, yeah. like I didn't sort of come up in that yeah. Tamworth world. You know, yeah. you know, these yeah. guys start going to that festival young, yeah, you know, and they yeah. start playing and doing the busking, and yeah. they, you know, they all kind of know each other, yeah. you know, and sort of just the, and there's a there's work, so they just kind of live in that scene but these guys they man they all play everything you know yeah they're they're great rock players and blues players and you know the 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 musicianship's really quite high yeah yeah um that yeah there's just there's something about it i just don't even know it is it's you know it's a different it's a different scene just because there's so much work and a lot of it isn't in major cities and these guys man they tour all year round and mm. they go everywhere like man I remember going to a place called Emerald or oh, yeah, Roma yeah. you know yeah, it's like yeah. Queen, central Queensland that's right yeah it's you'd like, have no other reason to go there yeah I was but, like yeah. turned up I was like man I've never been there before I had to look up on Google Maps where it was you know <laughs> and we end up there or yeah you know Bernie in Tasmania is oh, yeah. somewhere I went once you yeah. know it's like <laughs> so they you know where a, a, a pop like I said before like a pop artist or if you're doing an arena thing you know Sydney, Melbourne yep. Brisbane Adelaide maybe Perth yep. maybe Auckland yep. and then you're done yeah um, you know these guys are doing just anywhere there's a stage and, really and they do theatres all over the country yeah. you know so they you know and think it's like a insular world but they you know they just work all the time and they that's what they do I mean, it's just a different work ethic compared to a lot of others like they're they're willing to go out to places that no one else will go to yeah and that's probably why know, their and success there's is a it. fan base out there yeah. that's um yeah you know their their uh, their demographic is in that rural yeah. kind of area and i guess i guess probably from a i mean not to stereotype just country music in general but probably a lot of their, their lyric content and even just musically makes more sense to people in rural areas sure, sure. so yeah, there's a yeah. bit more of a uh, a bit more of an appreciation because it's linked a bit closer to them rather yeah, than you know yeah. and it's that it's it, 
it is these days especially it's more and the reason i was able to kind of get in there and make it work was it it's definitely the modern country stuff is more inspired by like your tom petty and the heartbreakers and bruce springsteen right, and okay. the eagles uh jackson brown 70s kind of west coast country rock thing you know so you know and it is that springsteen yeah working class yeah absolutely kind of lyric yeah content and story people can identify thing, with and it they, and people those, those people that you know out there like slogging it out on yeah. big properties and doing that kind of work yeah they identify with that stuff that's, you yeah know? that's why it's so successful i wonder if i mean you probably i don't know if you know but i wonder if so that whole country scene is is niched into so many subgenres like metal or rock where you've got so many different classifications of different types of of uh oh, yeah. subgenres i'm sure like there's be yeah. subgenres of country as well there, yeah there is there's like um the man the one that cracks me up is called bro country, bro country. have you heard that <laughs> <laughs> check that out yeah well it's like right. uh, i'll find a video and I'll, I'll put it up on the on it, the page yeah it's like this kind of i don't even know how to explain it. it's like this hip-hop influenced country rock wow. why not hey thing. yeah it's, is it really like is it popular yeah 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 there's, yeah, there's a niche of people that get into it it's like the um the the at the moment that i think in in the u.s it's like the real commercially wow successful kind of stream of country music and then there's like the backlash against that the traditionalist oh, yeah. traditionalist <laughs> it's just like, like the, the metal scene <laughs> yeah you know and then the bluegrass guys and yeah. um and then so what was it bro country bro country, bro yeah, country. Yeah, yeah, all right yeah. yeah i'll look that up you know but like man like we were talking about before fuck it's just, at the end of the day it's music yeah and there's gonna be something in there yeah there's, you know whether some people will probably disagree with that but mm. you know even the you know the cheesiest pop tune there's some there's there's something there's in something there, there where you go man that's cool there's there's yeah. some some something in there that's yeah, cool no, there's I gotta be yeah, you know yeah. but whether you know even i can i can kind of do that now am i going to go and buy all that stuff and listen to it probably not <laughs> but you know but you can appreciate lots it. of people do yeah, and yeah. you know someone's made someone's made it and you know that's their that's Bro their country. their kind of approach and incredible their take on it i love that i was not <laughs> expecting that that's perfect yeah. bro country yeah yeah um so i'm keeping an eye on the time but um what's the next 12 months look like for you uh next 12 months uh so this so this month we're going uh what have we got the gimpy muster also oh, yeah. country festivals yeah. they're called musters musters yeah, yeah i love that learn that yeah. one it's uh <laughs> I was like, man, muster. What? What even is that? Do they still? T <laughs> is is line dancing still a thing? Do they still? Uh, it pops up in Tamworth. You know, yeah. that's the that's the traditionalist world, man. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, the pure, the, 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 the purest. Pure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. So the Gimpy Muster. I'm up there with Adam Brand. Yep. He's okay. a, he, he's like definitely Springsteen yeah, kind of cool. school of of country. You yep. know, he doesn't even kind of think his music's country. It's like that's just the genre he yeah, ended yeah, up in you yeah. know they're just his songs and really they they're, they're pretty you know american rock yeah based yeah, cool. so i got that coming up also playing with a guy called maddie cornell up there okay the bass player you sort of see him with he played with richard clapton and the baby okay. animals yeah, and cool. uh you know a whole bunch yep. of people sort of through his career um and then september yeah you know back with with my sex again um doing some more shows like opening up with the angels which yeah, is cool. just man i love that yeah like just man is we, we did some last year and just turning up and standing on the side of the stage and watching rick and john brewster do that yeah no one does That's that cool. better yeah. than those guys yeah and standing behind the stage and you know listening to those guys do it that's is, it for me you know probably any aussie guitar player yeah in the last you know since they were around would just it's like heaven man you know? it's like <laughs> they do that thing together so well um 
and that you know oh, I've got to get up and have a bit of a jam with them and oh, that's... sort of do that and stand in between that happening and it's like a, one of those pinch yourself oh, moments yeah, for me absolutely. And, that's cool you know that was yeah that was one of those things that I was just like fuck am I really standing in is between this, Rick this and happening? John Brewster right now yeah <laughs> and playing an angel song I am with man you know yeah it's it like, wow. get better. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a is that a tour that you're doing with yeah them? it's yeah. a it's a they've just got a a new book out that's yep. just been written about the band yep. um, by a guy called Bob Yates yep. who actually managed My Sex back in the yeah, day well. so there's that sort of the connection, connection yeah, between cool. the two bands mm. um, so it's a it's a bit of a run to support the support the uh, release of yeah. the new book cool um, so that yeah that sort of runs September October and I think into maybe early November just sort of weekend stuff and there's a a cruise yep. in there which is a music festival on a boat which I've never done before and yeah. I've never been on a cruise before so that'll be there you wild. Go. tick a few boxes yeah, yeah it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be something else I'm not, not sure what to expect with that one but we'll see how we go um, yeah man that and then uh, I think that's kind of it man and then that's you it. know being being dad and that's teaching right. at JMC and uh, Keep, keep your options open. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, man. And, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe Steve will do do a show. Him and I might do another sort of kind of duo thing later yep. in the year. And, yeah, man, just sort keep, of the... keep chipping away at it, you know. <laughs> That's the other thing. You In between all that stuff, you got to find time to keep working at your craft and, yeah, yeah. you know, keep your chops up and, you know, learn. You know, you always, or at least, you know, I'd, I got to try and learn something new and get some new sort of ideas yep. for, imp- you know, solos and, you know, I'd, one of one of the things I like to do is, you know, find like a a solo, you know, or something that I just just blows my mind and man, I got to know what that is. <laughs> like I just can't. I, I get obsessed with stuff yeah, right, like that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I hear like a, you know, like a Lukather thing, you know, yep. and fortunately i'm sort of at a point with my playing now where i might be half a chance of maybe getting it you know <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy's such a motherfucker it's like it, it, i can slow it you know and there's programs where you can slow that know. stuff down it's never been easier uh you know so yeah that man hopefully some more of that you know yeah. I, I, I love doing that just at home and figuring out what these guys that what, who I consider just great are doing and try and get some new ideas and you know improve your craft and all of that yeah, you're not you, you know. can't be in a possibly in a better position than what you're in now so it's um, well, yeah it's great yeah man very uh very lucky <laughs> very lucky to just be man how, how good's playing music you yeah know? like absolutely oh, it's, can't beat it <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good way to end this one yeah yeah thanks man appreciate no, it right, bro. Good to chat. yeah likewise thanks everyone if you want to reach out to Travis I'm going to put all of his contact details over on the show notes over at antisocial.net um, including all of the things that we spoke about, different bands that he's been a part of and artists that he mentioned and uh, as mentioned at the start of the episode I will put a a little taste of what bro country is. I am blown away that such a subgenre exists. Well, I shouldn't be surprised because metal's pretty ridiculous with their subgenres and, and even rock, but um, who would have thought, hey? So go over to andysocial.net if you're interested or even slightly intrigued as to what the hell bro country is. You could probably guess what it would sound like, but um, yeah, you might be surprised. So <laughs> go over there and check it out. Um, if you want to support this podcast, and as of the time of recording, I haven't had any new iTunes reviews, guys. So if you want me to plug anything that you guys are up to, help me out, throw a review and a rating over on the uh, Andy Social iTunes page, 
and uh, make sure you plug what you do and what you're into and whatever's going on. And I'll make sure I uh, make a mention on the podcast and uh, and reference you on the show notes of that episode as well. But uh, get over there. If you don't use iTunes, any of the podcast players or YouTube, or even just via the website, if there's ways to like things, share things, comment on things, rate things, review things, whatever you can do to help will be a massive massive help to me and please let me know if you leave a review in a random spot on the internet because I'd love to be able to uh, return the favor and give you a shout out to make sure that uh, anything that you're passionate about is plugged through here. So that's it for another week. I'm keeping these outros and these intros as short as possible. I'm trying. I'm getting better. I think I'm getting better. So until next week, thank you so much as always and uh, we'll speak very soon. Bye-bye. You're ready, you're ready.